Beyond. Beyond. Oh man, it's nice to hear you say that. I yeah, like that feels a lot. good. To yeah, say it. Beyond and hello everyone. My name is Jonathan Dormish. I am your host for this episode. Beyond episode five hundred and sixty-four. I am joined by. Yeah, it's it's going places. Lord Almighty. I'm joined by uh, a big yeah, fan of the show from back in the sure, day. Sure, yeah, yeah I've you always been it. a big Beyond fan. Yeah, That's yeah, hundred percent. Uh, Greg Miller. Hey, how you of doing? Of kind of funny and formerly of Beyond, of course, in IGN. That's me. How are you doing, Greg? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. Congratulations pretty well. on getting to be the host of Podcast Beyond. Thank you so much. That's Thank why I invited myself on. I'm yes. like, wait a second, new full time host. I got to come in and check. Exactly. This out. See how bad he is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Show, see show. if he, Chris Roper wouldn't let you host this show a day in your life. <laughs> oh no, but I liked him so much. Uh, no, thank you, Greg. Would have let you. No. Oh, Roper would have let anybody. He seems like a show. good guy. Yeah, uh, Greg. First of all, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, oh my god, appreciate thanks for you coming me. on. As we've had a little bit of this changing of the guard. Uh, sure, I've mentioned on the show a lot, and I've mentioned to you. I listened to Beyond since day one. Yeah, so it is so, an honor to have you here. Sorry, eh, through the good and the bad, dude. I, when it was uh, who? Oh, when we had uh, years and years and years and years ago, Brian mm. Intaharan, when he got hired as community manager. I saw that. Yeah, some uh, the other day. Yeah, when the Spider-Man release stuff had just happened, uh, uh, a fan tweeted me and was like, "Hey, like it's crazy." I just heard the spoiler cast with you guys and Brian on Kind of Funny. And then I went back and I was listening to my Beyond Archive from IGN and ran into his. And I was like, I don't remember ever. And he sent me the MP3 and it's like early. It's me. It's Roper. It's Jeff. It's Clements. And I, oh. Dunham's already left. And it's like, that's the yeah. cast. And I listen to this show and I'm like, why did anyone listen to this show? <laughs> the first like minute and a half is all of us saying Beyond over and over again. Oh, in different yeah. voices. And it yeah. was just like. It was a minute and a half in the show. Who had this much time back then? Uh, uh, you guys could record for like two hours and people would, I would listen happily for oh, all that time. Thank you. For whatever reason, I would listen happily. But no, and I still obviously listen to a lot of and watch great kind of funny stuff today. Thank you. How are things going over at kind of funny? Oh, they're great. The no, I mean, it's just like you guys, you know, here we are leading into the holiday rush and every game's coming out and we're all stressed out trying to play them all yeah. on top of now it's, you know, the added thing of running the business yeah. and having yeah. employees. And then we decided to throw a showcase and uh, yeah, making it easier on yourselves. Yeah. Why not? You know, game I mean? showcase. Yeah, they, if you, like it, it used to be it got nice and quiet right after Black Friday, <laughs> and uh, now we decided that wasn't good enough for us. Yeah, I will, I love that you guys are doing that, and I do definitely want to talk about it a little later sure. in the show. I think that is such a like fun way to. We've talked a little bit about the not having a PSX this year, and I think sure. to have that thing, especially to celebrate a lot of the indie devs who won't have that spotlight anymore. Yeah, hundred percent. I think is an awesome thing to be doing. Yeah, the community. We do, of course, have a ton of PlayStation stuff to talk about this week as well. Oh, uh, you still do that on this? Show? Yeah, we still talk okay, about cool. PlayStation a little bit every now and then. Uh, the first thing I want to jump into is there was a recent PlayStation blog post about the next wave of PS4 games. Uh -huh. They talked a little bit about, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Deracine? Yeah, I, is it? trust me, you do not want to go to me for you for pronunciation. pronunciation. Oh, I remember yeah, the show yeah, yeah. well. Okay, well uh, we have that coming. We have Everybody's Golf VR coming. Cannot wait. I'm sure. Cannot wait. Uh, we also will have Concrete Genie coming. And cool, Greg, cannot wait. <laughs> cannot wait. <laughs> that uh, press release also, or that blog post also revealed that Days Gone has been delayed to April 26th out of the very busy February 22nd. What a clever way to package that exactly. news. Exactly. Here's yeah. an update on all these first parts. Days Gone's not coming. Days Gone's not Yeah. Uh, well, so first of all, let's talk about that delay a little sure. bit. I personally... I think the delay is just a smart business sense of like that day is already as packed as could be. 100%. And why put out a, a, a game that I think like the PlayStation audience you've seen some excitement from, but I think compared to something like The Last of Us or Death Stranding, there's oh, sure. like a more tempered excitement. Well, I mean, right even now. what it'd be coming out against competition wise, like yeah. Anthem, like there's more excitement for Anthem than Days Gone. Yes. Division 2 is a couple weeks later, there's more excitement for Division 2 than there yeah. is that, right? And Crackdown. I don't know what the excitement level is, but there's a lot of interest in what's happening. If it comes out, yeah, yeah exactly, we'll yeah, see. exactly. I think it's supposed to be playable or later this year. I'm yeah, XO one eight. Yeah, talking about very curious to see that. Uh, but yeah, I think it's probably the best thing that could happen for days. One hundred percent. Especially, we haven't seen outside of the game informer cover this year. We haven't really seen a ton from it. Sure. Uh, Did so you get to play it at E three or anything? Uh, no, I actually didn't get to play it. Yet. I played it at Judges Week. Yeah. Uh, leading up to E three and. I know I'm Greg Miller and I'm, uh, you know, PlayStation, Sony Pony and all that. Yeah, shit. of course. But like I very and I'm a zombie fan, too, and all this difference. And I know Sam Witwer <laughs> 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 I, 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 and I know Sony Band and Eric yeah. Jensen's a Beyond fan. Yada, yada, yada. I should be all in on the game. But when they when they did the, you know, the showcases they had done before of just showing it at uh, E3. Here's the trailer. It was like, OK, it's a zombie game. What separates it? I don't really get it. But yeah. playing it, it was like, oh, you know what? Like. This world seems cool. Like, yes. I want to free roam in this open. You know, I, I was riding the motorcycle and sure, fighting the tweakers or whatever, but then going and I was driving and I saw this line across the road and thought it was like a glitch. So I stopped, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. It was a tripwire and I mm -hmm. cut it and then these dudes ran at me and I killed them and then ran. And it was like, 
oh, this is a world, and that's the best thing I can ever say for an open world game, is that yeah. I just want to walk in that direction. Yeah. What am I going to find if I wander off in that direction? It seems like, and obviously there was that E3 conference a couple years ago where they had the like two showcases where it like ended, began and ended yeah, yeah, with Days yeah. Gone. I feel like it is a game that doesn't probably demo as well as it will be to play five hours of it. And that's going to be the and big thing, is yeah. like I, playing it and talking to people who played it, we were all like, oh, you know what, that was cool. Like yeah. That's the way to do it, and I think that's got to spread, not organically, but it needs to be spread, and it's not going to spread if it's if it's surrounded by everything Everything else trying to come exactly. on February 22nd. Yeah, we could say, that, oh, there's this surprisingly deep emotional story that we love in this yeah. and like amazing things to explore in this world. And people will be like, yeah, but I can be Iron Man right now. Yeah, exactly. Anthem, exactly. So I'm going to be Iron I can Man. fly and then go right underwater. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So I I understand the reasons for moving it. I've And I also, I mean, great. shout out to them for being honest about it. Yes. Like their blog post was like, hey, you know, it, it, we, we would have been on time, but it's a crowded date and we're going to push it to give more time to polish, but also because we don't want to compete on that level and we want this thing to have a shot. Yeah, I love. We're seeing that more and more of just game companies being kind of honest of the realities 100%, of yeah. working in this business, yeah. and I think it's all for the better, especially yeah. in the messaging of all these things. And I feel like that's a PlayStation we haven't seen in a while. Right? Yes. They, they, yeah. And I, I think maybe PSN name changes might be the most recent example outside of this. Yeah. But before then, there was concern of, did we see the hubris of the PlayStation 2 era that led to the downturn in PS3 at yeah. launch coming around in PlayStation 4? Because PlayStation 4 launches, and Sony is hungry, and they get it. We're a machine for gamers, and we're going to talk straight to you as a gamer. Yeah. I'm Mark Cerny. This is Adam Boys. That's Shuhei Yoshida. We're That's Nat. Yeah, this is <laughs> Nat. <laughs> and it changes everything. Yeah. But they talk right to you. Yeah. And then we've seen E3 go back to being, hey, I'm Sean Layden. Here's a bunch of awesome trailers and amazing things you want to see, yeah. but us not putting the human face front and center. Yeah, there, it's definitely been more about the games, and don't get me wrong, those games deserve the spotlight. But yeah, when you're able to have that human connection, I think it engages the audience so much more. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, 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 the thing we struggle with, I think, in the video game industry is reminding people that, yeah, humans are behind all of this. Yes. And so yeah, it's easy to hate the the big PlayStation brand or the corporation, whether it be you know Microsoft, Xbox, Nintendo, but to actually have a person attached to it, that's helpful. And it's a great uh, when you need to blame someone. Sure, you have that person right there. Of course, so right there, right to Twitter. Exactly, right to yeah. Twitter with it's, it's a wonderful place. Uh, but also wanted to talk about some of those games that are coming up in it. I think I haven't gotten to play it, so I was curious your thoughts on Concrete Genie. Sure, uh, especially because uh, it was at uh, its its first prominent showing was at that PSX that you were a part of yeah. uh, hosting and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you feel about this game? Because I feel like it's a little bit under the radar. It is under the radar, yeah. and I think just looking at it, right, you can see why. Yes. It's, it's, it's a funky artsy game which and playstation i think in the ps3 area used to be known for right that yeah. was their bread and butter in a lot of ways um and it's something you don't see as much anymore in playstation 4 i'm fascinated by it i think it looks really cool when you talk to them about it it's deeper than what they've shown which yeah. is exciting because looking at it you're like okay i get it like basic problem solving put the monster on the wall and the monster's gonna let me advance to the next stage they say there's more of it uh the developers so I'm interested in it. Uh, I work with a guy named Cool Greg. He's very interested in it. He'll be giving you all sorts of takes on it. Ooh. But yeah, it's it seems like an, a chill game, right? And that's yeah. what you'd expect from this team. Yeah, I'm excited for it. I hope they put it out at a time when it can be given a chance. We don't have yep. like an official release date. But yet. that's and the thing is like when, they said when spring, right? Yeah. And when in in spring is not the in time. New video game. game industry. When in spring is not going to be a crowded. Time. Yeah, I, I honestly I think pushing it a little bit even toward the summer would be a good idea. Of just yeah. like when there's yeah, more of a dearth, you'd have a good time for it. Yeah. Uh, and we're also seeing we've seen a continued push more and more. And I do want to get your thoughts on this because there is a dedicated Beyond group who loves PlayStation VR. There's and many yes, I've I've been a recent convert of sort oh. of going in full time into it. Okay, I played with it occasionally here and there. And sure. now just like the recent string of games that I've been playing, like playing Firewall, Astrobot, uh, Astrobot is incredible. Yeah. And so dipping into a few of these games and more coming, I love the emphasis they're giving it. And oh, have, yeah. have you tried out uh, Deracine or Everybody's Golf in VR? Uh, I haven't done Deracine and then Everybody's Golf in VR. I, has it had a showing we've been around? I'm not sure. It was. I want to say it was at TGS that you yeah. put the first shot. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, I would have yeah. loved to have played that at something else. So no, I haven't done it, but I'm a huge believer in PlayStation VR. And yeah. I've been so happy with the PlayStation VR rollout so far because, you know, being what, 12 years in the industry covering PlayStation the whole time, right? <laughs> like, I'm used to seeing them be like, hey, it's PlayStation Move. All right, we're fading away from it. Nobody yeah. cares. Hey, it's Vita. Hey, and like they give it for a little bit and then go away. And I think PlayStation VR is one of the best message devices slash hardware PlayStation's ever put out mm -hmm. where they did the rounds and it was, hey, everybody, we believe in this tech, except... It's Gen 1 
and that's like right now we're in the PlayStation 4 era, that would be like us launching PS1 right now. Yeah. So if you're going to buy it, you need to believe in it and understand where we're at and where we want to go with it and what your help could do. And when they said that, I was like, okay, I'm going to back <laughs> off it and not do it. Yeah. And they didn't. And then on top of that, the audience that bought it believed the message. Yes. Like, I, I, it's funny to be you know, talking about um, Beyond, right? I remember when we started Beyond, we started it during the PlayStation 3 era, and it was when... Xbox was just running <laughs> ruck shot. All every PlayStation decision was terrible. So you had this hardcore community that was like, "Hey, I love PlayStation and I love the IPs and I'm gonna stick." And so, right now in the PlayStation ecosystem, I feel like that's PlayStation VR. Yeah. Where uh, when you go, when I go to the PSVR subreddit, right, it's people every day coming on and being like, "I joined the club, I bought it, I'm super stoked," and it's people being excited. And I'm not saying that doesn't exist everywhere else in video games, but it is like a pretty purely positive place. And it is also yeah. like, and granted, I think some of that's, uh, you know, the community of beyond the community of kind of funny that we've, we all champion, no, be a good person, be a best friend, tell developers that you love them. Right. Yeah. But on the VR subreddit, you have people telling developers they love you have developers coming in and talking straight to the community. Like in the same way, Vita had a small quote unquote install base, but a very dedicated install base. It's the same thing you hear. Like people who buy PlayStation VR buy PlayStation VR games. And so the fact that Sony sees that, and I would say in a lot of ways, even compared to Oculus and HTC, haven't backed off. Yeah. Right. They it, maybe they didn't do it like pedal to the metal like Oculus did when they were first getting going and like we're gonna be the next big oh, thing. Yeah. yeah. They've been consistent and steady. And I think that pays off in why you're still seeing great stuff come out, and like, let alone Tetris Effect this year, right? Yeah. Like, the, the year of PlayStation VR isn't even done. Is It's pretty incredible, too, what they have still coming up, like you were saying. And I think they said around the second anniversary announcements or when they announced they hit a certain uh, sales goal, yeah. they talked about, and the attach rate is essentially six to one, yeah. which is so unheard of these days. Yeah. yeah every person who's buying PSVR is buying And that, I forget games. who I was talking to on Kind of Funny Games Daily, but I was bringing up the fact, like, oh, and, oh and it was a conversation about, like why this one multiplayer game or why this oh what is the playstation vr game they just announced uh borderlands oh yeah not multiplayer and i was like that's such a weird move yeah and there was my co-host was like well you know it's a vr game what's the install base i'm like i would have bought that kind of up until firewall like firewall i've never struggled need, in the game yeah you get on and everybody's excited to play and even rec room i when i played rec room with people I, or yeah. uh, when i played rec room i'd find people to play with sprint vector another great one yeah, yeah. it feels like i the borderlands thing may be yeah i don't know if it's technical limitations or worries or what but sure. yeah it, it was an interesting choice to see especially for a game that is so co-op yes yeah. and I, I would imagine you know for borderlands it was just what do we want to put into it based on what we're gonna get out of it yeah. like running a server worrying about online lag infrastructure yada yada, yada. it's probably easier to to port the, or, you know make the game for VR and put it out that yeah way. there's so much more to it than just yeah but everyone can play it yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah there's a difficulty there I do love seeing I, I'm curious for you what are do you think makes a great VR experience one for yourself but one that you can also show people oh, wow. to, uh, to make people into this because we're seeing things like Tetris effect coming yeah. uh, Deracine it looks like it's not going to be too heavy on the emphasis of like gameplay mechanics necessarily sure. like I think it would be something you could probably get someone less familiar with games into. oh but sure what do you think makes that I mean, part. what makes a good place a good VR game, right? Yeah. And I can only really speak for PlayStation VR. Yeah, is right now taking the experience you already know and just tweaking it slightly, mm -hmm. right? Like when you, I think of standouts recently, right? Moss. Yeah. When I uh, Astrobot, right? And these are games that you're still using the traditional controller. It's what you know, but your field of view, right? And leaning into a scene and looking around, uh, you know, an Astrobot or Moss standing up and looking a little bit over there and finding the collectible. Like, that's cool and easier to wrap your head around than, hey, I'm dr like uh, in uh, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Hey, now you can explore Croft Manor. And I was like, awesome. And I put on and immediately got car sick. Yep. And I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> like, this feels so weird. Yeah. Taking a game for these baby steps we're still making with VR, taking a game people understand, but then twisting it just enough where they go oh my gosh i couldn't do this without vr that's rad yeah and then for the experience games of terms of what, what to show people that's i think what you've seen already the experience games where it is like i you know my friend poe was in town and when, when i showed my mom and when jen and i had some friends in town it was like oh my gosh all right uh mom try batman all right uh, we're gonna do a uh, diner duo vr together right where <laughs> one person cooks and one piece person delivers uh yeah. now we're doing super hot like these are the games you jump in and people are sweating and they're hot and they're like oh my gosh this is so crazy and amazing but they don't want to necessarily do it for eight hours totally whereas yeah. i could sit there for an entire afternoon and play astrobot and be fine yeah super hot is that one where i'm eventually like all right i'm gonna sit down. i need a break yeah. yeah i yeah my girlfriend she does not love vr she gets motion sick very easily from it yeah. and just has never really wanted to get into it but when i was playing astrobot 
asked her about it. She's like, fine, go into the headset and disappear for an hour or two. Yeah. But she was immediately like, no, you're missing the thing. Go over there. Nice. Like she was sitting there watching and she didn't want to put on the headset, but she was invested in like, oh, this is a unique way to sort of look. So yeah, for experience. my wife, this is a complete opposite experience where I put it on. She's like, all right, go ahead and do it. And then it was like, oh my God, you put on headphones. <laughs> these astrobots are the most annoying. Yippee, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Like there's like oh all yeah, these sound weird effects, side of it. I'm like, sir, sorry, sorry. Yeah, understand. Yeah, uh, she definitely made me put on the headphones eventually, but at least she was interested at first. Uh, yeah, that's all I can ask for. Exactly. Uh, they talked about in this blog post about how sort of this is the next wave. This is essentially looking for, in my mind, everything before E3 next year. Sure. Of like the biggest hits yeah, that they can sense. confirm are going to happen. Yeah. We don't really know when the Dreams beta will officially be at this point. If <laughs> Well, uh, what, it was supposed to be two summers ago, I yeah. believe, originally? Yeah. Uh, uh, Andrew Goldfarb and I keep looking every time we write about Dreams of how many Dreams beta announced and delayed posts have we yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, know, it's funny. They rarely delay them. They true. rarely yeah. just like, we're going to do it this summer. Right, bye. Yeah, it's it's just kind of goes away slowly. Yeah. yeah. It's that. It's a very weird thing, but I hope we eventually see more of that sometime early next year, too. We've yeah. been having a huge reveal of it from the Game Informer cover right now. Sure. So yeah, curious to see more of that. My question for you is what do you think this means for the other big PlayStation worldwide studios games that we oh, sure. don't so, have release dates for? So Last, Last of Us, of Us. Uh, Ghost, Ghost of Tsushima, Death Stranding is not a worldwide studios game, but obviously it's sort of a big tentpole. But at yeah. least for those first two, what do you think this means for their release wise? What are we I mean, I think it I stand by. I've been saying Last of Us was going to be a ways out. Yeah. And, I, and I know I always get backlash whenever I talk about it because people want to believe. And I want to believe it too. I'll take it as <laughs> soon as you can possibly give it to me, Mr. Druckmann. But I mean, I feel like it's got to be 2020 at the yeah. earliest, right? Now, that's where I've always kind of been saying it's, I think it's going to shake out. But to have Days Gone push deeper in at April, I, I'm not. So many people are like, oh man, two zombie games in a year. It's like, well, one of them's Last of Us, but I also feel like, well, one of them being Last of Us steps on the tail this game would possibly have going into the holidays. Yeah. So why would you do that? And like maybe, yeah, you know, spring of 2020, even then, you've distanced yourself far enough away from it. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima is a great question. Uh, I'd love to believe that one's a fall game next year, but I really do feel, and I think you see it, right? That PlayStation is totally in this. When it's done, it's done. Like, yes. We're not going to rush you. We're not going to do it. And I think. Ghost of Tsushima, I'm ready to play. That's the biggest thing about it, right? Yeah. Where I think we've seen cool demos. I've seen, I went, you know, I'm sh like you probably behind closed doors at E3 and Nate Fox, you know, paused it and spun it and, and yeah. Brian's talking about all this stuff. All that's rad, but I'm ready to hold it and see what it actually controls and feels like. And Absolutely. so I don't even know how many m more times they want to show that. You'd think go big one more time at E3, hopefully. And yeah. Get it out. I, I don't want that to be a game where we see it for four conferences exactly. in a row. And exactly. It ruins sort of the mystery of what that could be. 100%. Yeah, I think it's interesting seeing, I, there's been like a lot of talk of people being like, are we going to see these as cross-generational games yeah. where it comes out at the tail end, probably also on whatever the PS5 is. I think we'll likely get the case of that. I agree with you. I hadn't really thought about it, but yeah, having The Last of Us in the same year as Days Gone would just be unfair to kind of make and similar that, games and, and that's the struggle, especially with them making this decision right now, right? Where they're like, listen, Days Gone, and they didn't, in so many words, can't compete with these other games. And yeah. we're, it's a new IP. We're gaining ground. We're doing all this different stuff. Yeah. That I, I think they understand that in the same breath of not wanting to compete with themselves. Totally. Where I do feel like you, you like you know, there's the spectacular sale on PSN right now, right? Yeah. If you were to put, if we jump ahead to next year and Days Gone is there at thirty five dollars, I think most people are gonna be like, oh yeah, I heard good things about that. Oh, Why absolutely. not pick it up? But if it's thirty five dollars, but Last of Us comes out in two weeks, no, or it came out two weeks ago, no. Well, yeah. Why do that? I think, and I really like your point of them being willing to say like, we'll wait till it's ready, and that's when it'll come out. Yeah. Because I feel like in the beginning of this generation, we got burned a couple times where. They didn't really have big fall releases that were first party. Sure. They often would say something like Uncharted 4 was coming in the fall and then yeah. delay it to the spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There just doesn't seem to be a reason to have games have announced release dates and then have them keep slipping. It felt well, like I mean, it was that was the, I remember I remember, you know, being at this table talking about that <laughs> stuff, right? And it was like as you'd get closer and closer and it was things would start falling, you're like, "Man, they're screwing up. I can't believe it." And it just didn't matter. Yeah. They kept succeeding. They kept selling units. And it became that thing of like, oh, we're not in the same place we were where the logic of we need to catch up. Let's put out great games. Let's do all stuff. It is like, no, people are buying PlayStations regardless of what Sony's putting out. They're excited when they do. Obviously, Spider-Man, God of War, it's been a banner year this year for it. Yeah. But it doesn't need to be that that came out this fall. Like, let the third parties and, you know, all your partners compete at the fall and worry about that. And they've seen great sales success in the spring. So yeah. I don't oh, yeah, it, totally. it's never really been an issue. Well, that's why everything's generation. so overloaded now, right? Is like, yeah. remember back in the day when they when it was like, what dying light <laughs> dying light's coming out in january like, that's a dumb move why would yeah. you put that game out and then we got there and everybody was like i want a new game i've played all my christmas releases my holiday releases i want something new and then it was like every woke up to the fact of like wait if you put something out in the spring people are starving They're for hungry. new content yeah. right and you've seen it with resident evil horizon monster, monster Hunter, Hunter. games that are just 
I think as Monster Hunter in particular, right? A game that I loved and I reviewed for IGN on PSP back in the day, and I was like, I'm kind of Monster Hunter out. But to get to that point and have everyone talking about it and to jump in, I was, you know, 135 hours later, I was like, oh, it was a great game. Absolutely. Had yeah. a great time with it. Yeah. It's, I think it's a really smart thing, and we're seeing it continue even into next year with January being both Kingdom Hearts 3 and RE2. Mm. It's, mm. I think, a trend we're going to keep seeing. RE2, yeah, that's another great fit there, it, right? Of like, it, it, I th- you want to talk about, it's going to, I mean, if they don't screw it up, going to be a great game. Yeah. So it's already got, hey, I'm a hardcore Resident Evil fan who's been waiting for this forever, Brittany Bromrocker. It uh, <laughs> was a good game. Oh, yeah. And then it's also people who are like, oh, I, I, like me, I tried to put. I should have loved Resident Evil Two on PS One, right? I'm zombies are, are my favorite horror movie. I I was down for that thing, and I, I just got in. I was like, ooh, tank controls. I can't do it. I can't yeah. handle it, right? So like, I'm excited on that level. And then you have, I'm sure, a bunch of young kids who don't listen to me, who are <laughs> coming in and being like, I've heard so many good things about Resident Evil Two. I've never seen it or played it. I want to jump in. Yeah, I missed RE Two back when it first came out, and have been hit or miss with the Resident Evil franchise. But Seven really reinvigorated me into what this yeah. can be and Two. what I can be excited about. Exactly. So I, yeah. I, had, I I mean, I think I had played Code Veronica and <laughs> then a little bit of Five. Maybe I had played through Four, obviously, but like I wasn't into the, any of them. I was like, oh, no, I don't need to find. And then Seven, dude, in PlayStation VR, I was like, this is insane. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so obviously we've been talking a lot about games that are coming out in the future. We've got a ways to wait for them. But Greg, there's a thing out right now. You and I have both played and people out there can play it right now too. What's that? Spider-Man's first DLC. She's right there, Black Cat. The heist. The heist. heist. The first of three chapters in The City That Never Sleeps trilogy of DLC that is all set to come out this year. I still have my theory and I hope that they push I somewhat. I think they're going to delay ep- episode two to a little bit later. Oh, really? Uh, and Why? then have, just because of, I think they'll get some feedback from people who like things about the first Heist DLC, people who mm-hmm. may have criticisms mm-hmm. of it, and they want to make what I think fans really want okay. from it. And maybe just, I don't know how it is easy to turn around DLC in a month. Like, that seems just crazy to me. Right. And so I would rather them say, hey, we're going to delay it a week or two, just to make sure it's perfect. Sure. So I would rather them do that. I don't know if they will. But. I was surprised with this one. I thought they would delay this. Yes. Because you're in Red Dead week. And granted, you're before Red Dead, but still, like, especially when, and I guess this isn't a great example, but how they last week just put out New Game Plus and like all the new difficulty and the new trophies. I was yeah. like, oh, man, that's great. I thought you would have spaced it out more, put them together yeah. and, and to make one package. But I guess you get two press beats out of it. Yeah, it's it's just a really good time to check back into the game. 100%. For people who Platinum did a while back. Man, so. what a... I checked in last night. What a heartbreak to check back into because oh, yeah. it's just like, wait, how do I do anything? Yeah. I'm trying to fight like Assassin's Creed. I I'm did like, the same no, thing. no, no. Yeah. I'm like, how do I run? I'm hitting R3, L3, yeah. nothing. Yeah. All, all my gadgets were wasted in the first two oh, minutes sure. yeah, because yeah. I'm just like, that's not Assassin's I was like, activate your scan the environment. Yeah. I just web blossomed everybody. I was like, yeah. right, that's what that does. No, Got to restart. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, so we're going to try to stay at least story-wise spoiler-free as possible for the DLC because as you're listening, it's available, but you may have not jumped through the full story yet. Sure. Uh, but this is the first of three chapters, like I mentioned, and it it focuses on the introduction of Black Cat, what we've been joking a lot about in the text before this uh, DLC came out. It's like, Black Cat's back in town, as if she was ever there at first. She was in the she game. Wa- you did she the mission. She, she was ba- yeah. She left She was in the background. She, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She but she herself. She was clearly there once. At one point. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, so this DLC focuses on her reintroduction into Spider-Man's world and what sort of transcends after that. Yeah. I uh, don't want to say too much more about the story, but I did want to get sort of your general impressions about what you've experienced with the DLC so far and what you feel like does it is it what you wanted out of spider-man dlc is it satisfying you so far what you've played wise yeah uh so far so good yeah it's giving me what i want uh we were talking about this before the show started i haven't beaten the story section of it uh i we, we think I, I can't have much more you're pretty somewhere. close to the that end. was the yeah. thing is i was just running mother-in-law was in town a million things were happening but for me yes it's what i wanted of hey here's a contained story jump on in here's some new side missions here's some new crimes here's a it was like okay like great this is all i want is more from this game yeah all you know when i went it's that rare thing that i platinumed it and i was like oh you know and then it was like yeah. I, then i and i platinumed it and put it away and then it was like oh wait no the, you get the if you go and finish off the secret photos you get the i'm like yay something else to do and then it like it's a game I'm never going to delete because I just want to web swing. Yeah. So to web swing and have new goals to hit and new things to do and you know new uh, internet challenges to do. Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, great. And then on top of that, the storyline they're giving us is interesting and is good so far for me. You know what I mean? And they are playing with exactly what you know Bill Roseman always talks about when he talks about why uh, Insomniac's the perfect pick and what they're bringing to this is that every great Spider-Man story, right, has stakes for Spider-Man and stakes for Peter. And so to see. Peter juggling Black Cat and uh, MJ, right? And having to talk to them about, it's like, 
that's great. And then yeah. like some of the story twists they take you on and like the situations they put him in, I think a lesser video game would have brought her in. All right, this is why she's doing it. All right, cool. You never have a great character moment between them all. But the way they're doing it, it's like, man, I'm interested for the story. I want yes. to know. I, I, as soon as we're done, it's back home. Get on the PlayStation <laughs> 4 and finish it off because I, I want to know how this episode ends. Yeah, I think it's really cool in the way that they, they're they leaning into, I think, what worked so well in the base game. And it was those performances and the yeah. writing of everything. Yuri Lowenthal and Laura Bailey are still so good as Spidey and MJ. Like 100%. the chemistry between the two of them as those characters is just I one of my favorite It's parents. that and then the fact uh, that I was trying to not say the fact that because I <laughs> always say the fact that and I know Beyond fans hate it. And I, I had a high school teach, English teacher who said never use the fact that in mm, your writing. I, he I, hated I, it. Trust me. Oh, I, use I, I, I talk all the time, so it's different now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you want to talk about two voice actors getting lost in the role where I, it, it is that thing I pride myself on. I'll be playing a game and Nolan will pop up or Troy or Travis and I'm like, oh, there they are. And even tra like Travis in this game, right? You know, yeah. as Kingpin. I'm like, oh, and I don't mean like, oh, yeah, heck. I mean like, <laughs> oh, I just know those are my friends. Mm -hmm. And like, I can't, I don't see Yuri and I've, no, I've known Yuri for years and talked to him for a long time. Laura, most of the time I hear in a game and I'm like, oh, it's Laura Bailey. Even like when Nadine originally popped up, right? And Uncharted, yeah. you're like, ah, oh, Laura Bailey. But like this one, I I remember playing it and I was like, is that, is, it is it, is it? I don't, I, oof. And then, they just are who they are. They yeah. are those characters in such an amazing way to play through this game. And it's nice to, uh, this feels to me like, I, my biggest issue, I guess, with it is just that it is, to an extent, slight in that it definitely feels like the first of three parts. Sure. Uh, and so for me, I'm writing the review right now, and it's that weird thing of like, I had a great fun night with this thing. Yeah. And But I almost would say, if you want to really have the full experience, you probably want to wait for episodes two and three mm. to like fully get the the grasp of this DLC pack, but what if it... So stick with me in a yeah. spoiler fashion. Does yeah. does Black Cat's story end here or no? Is this is, is two and three very much about her still? I would say no. Okay. I, I don't think this is the end of Black Cat's involvement in this world. But, but what, do I get a do I get a an end parentheses on the story that they started here? A little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a few of the big questions you kind of get answers to, but yeah, there are things left hanging for sure. sure. And it, it is that thing of it feels like the first issue in a comic arc, and I really like that. Yeah, me and too. I'm sure you, yeah, you don't I'm mind big that. Fan of that. Yeah. Thumbs up from Greg on that. One. <laughs> uh, it is that thing, though, of I think every new idea is great, and I wish they used them a little bit more, is the only mm. thing. But it is mm. the first of three DLC episodes. And so that, they'll use them more. Like there's a, in the first mission of the game, this isn't really a huge story. If you're watching the video version of the show, you can see that there's like a crowd control mechanic at one point yeah. where you have to prevent people from escaping the that, museum. Yeah, and exactly. it's just like a nice twist on like, oh, I don't have to just beat up these 10 guys. I have yeah. to make sure that guy doesn't get too yeah, far. Yeah, 100%. That was uh, cool. I like that one, too. But yeah, I like ideas like that. I just wish there was more involvement in them in the DLC, I guess, sure. because I think the strongest parts of the base Spider-Man for me were the story and the characters and obviously the swinging. Yeah. Uh, but there aren't necessarily new abilities in this DLC. And so the swinging that you're familiar with is still that great swinging. Yeah. Uh, but like, And I hear you and I'm not. Yeah. Like, but like for me, that was the, like, oh, man, it was like returning to it. Right. Yes. Especially today playing again where I actually got back in the swing of it. Yeah. No, no pun intended. But where it, it did all feel natural again. And I was R1 and L1 web zipping the things and springing off and going. It was like, all right, yeah. yeah. And everything works here. It feels great. Oh, it feels so nice to be back in that groove. Absolutely. It, it just was one of those things where I'm like, I see them trying new things in almost every other aspect. And I just was like, what if he had a new gadget or something sure. too? But I understand sure. like... One, they made this DLC in such a crazy turnaround, I can't even fathom it yeah. um, for what it is. But two, yeah, I just can understand how that may break the base game somewhere yeah. if you just threw in a new gadget. Yeah, something. for me, I think it's just the fact of, hey, guess what? You're back in the world. You're back in New York. And yeah. like, here are the, the new different side missions, little crimes to go do. It's like, yeah. cool, that's what I wanted was it, more. It instances you into a new version of New York. It's the same New York, but you only can really focus on the... DLC objectives, save for like mm -hmm. backpacks and landmarks. So it's nice to be able to have that. It, it's still an open world, but you're still sort of focused on what this new content can, is. You can only play it when you beat the game, right? I, so I haven't tried it on a new save. I was, okay. I'm was i going to do that actually later today. Because I, when, I, when I started it and like some of the conversations Pete and MJ were having, I was like, oh, this is like very safe. You know, that way they don't cross over. And then I forget what it was before I left. It was like, oh, I think. You would only, that's if you, if the, you beat the game. It, it dips into the way that I think of the character relationships at the end of the game and the revelations at the end of that game play into a lot of the incidental dialogue yeah. as I went through this. And so I pretty much, like if you have not beat the main campaign, I would not jump into this because you probably will have a few things spoiled for you. Gotcha. But it very much feels like the intention is, hey, you've beaten the story. We're continuing Spider-Man's life with something that is not 
earth shattering like oh, the main story. I remembered but, what it is. This is definitely after. This is definitely. It is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. they definitely hinted. I was trying to say. No, it's not even hint. I know. Oh, well, no. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to be nice for the kids. I'm just know. letting you know. Definite. 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 No, just, no, really, just I don't just think just you can play it until you beat it. So just yeah, beat it. Just, yeah, that's true. Just <laughs> beat it. If you haven't beaten it, come on. Yeah, I was what waiting you, for like the game of the year edition with everything bundled in. I get it. Yeah, but we'll probably get that. I assume it'd be hard to do because the third DLC comes out in December. So I'd be yeah. curious when they'll yeah. do that. But I'm excited the fact that we have two more Spider-Man mini campaigns through, through the rest of the year. So very fun to see that. Obviously, though, if you finish the Spider-Man DLC, uh, as you mentioned before, there's a sale of the dead going on the PlayStation there is. store yeah. right now. And so maybe you finish the DLC. Need more other other things to play in a spooky mood, mm. in a spoops mood. Uh, so I thought we'd give News some cast. news. Ghost is News back. ghost. <laughs> oh God, uh, that's bringing back a lot of memories. Uh, just as a listener, you actually experienced <laughs> those memories. So I'm like, why am I saying that? Uh, I thought we'd give just a couple of recommendations for people looking sure. for stuff on the store. Uh, I'll start with one of mine and then jump to you. One of my first ones is Soma. Oh yeah, which took me really by surprise. Uh, I think. What affected me the most about this game, and I don't want to say too much because if you jump into it, a lot of it is uncovering the mystery of this world and your character and everything. I just, the they nail this atmosphere of just this constant dread and uncertainty about what you're going to encounter in the next room. And it's a first person sort of puzzly uh, walking simulator game uh, where you're going through this station that you don't really understand the full breadth of until you get further and further and you get to learn so much about who you're playing as, but also what this world is. And it, one scared the hell out of me like multiple times just yeah. some of the encounters you have in that world and just creeping into a place and thinking something is going to probably try to kill you sure and whether or not it actually does is part of the mystery but uh <laughs> I, yeah this game just rocked me and i kind of i played it over i think two or three nights when it first came out and i did not expect it going in but it became one of my favorite games of that year i forget what year it came out but um yeah that that is stuck with me as one of those games where oh now i need to watch out for what this developer does next oh sure. one of those experiences yeah, yeah, yeah. for me that's always great when something puts somebody on the map yes like on yeah. your radar you're like i'm never gonna not pay and it that. wasn't like they were unknown it's the developers of amnesia yeah. so it's not it's not like they were unheard of guys struggling but, company you had never heard yeah of. but they were one kickstarter away from being out of business <laughs> i stay away from spooky things a lot of the time up until the last year or two yeah so it was one of those like let me indoctrinate myself into scary games and that was sort of the first thing i did nice and then it was right into that to pt so i had, oh, wow. I had a yeah, fun okay. october a couple yeah, years yeah, ago yeah, yeah. yeah um that one's pretty cheap right now and i absolutely recommend it if it's like 12 hours to beat it's not that big a investment uh greg what's something that you would recommend uh until dawn this yeah is, jumped off uh the list for me when we were looking through and you kicked this over to me like you know what a game until dawn was you know it is i mean super massive obviously coming out of the blocks with this for the playstation audience yeah i'll never forget the psx where they showed this and did the live playthrough and i thought that was the one that really set the tenor of what PSX was and that conference was where they played it and they got to the first choice of like, does Hayden Penitentiary run this way or that way? And everybody screamed like, <laughs> what, it was like, even then you're like, wow, they got something here. They yeah. have something cool here, especially for the story of Until Dawn uh, and the development of that. Of, I remember seeing that years and years and years it felt like before it came out I mean, probably two years but it, like it had move wands at first and it was this that and it was like what is this game and so when they rebranded it and came back and it was this horror movie you play with all your choices and the butterfly effect we we're all like i don't know what to make of this and yeah. playing through it you were like oh my gosh and then to see it uh you know become not only just something you played through that you played through together with people and then people would throw parties and then have the decision which leads to you know super massive doing the play link stuff later on with hidden agenda which mm -hmm. was all that and we don't talk about the other games they did in between there that we didn't like <laughs> yeah but it, yeah i mean until dawn it was amazing so the fact you can get it cheap right now it's a great halloween game if you haven't played it yeah i remember you you guys championing it and that was it was totally off my radar and then the way you guys sort of talked about it with such conviction i was like i should probably give this a chance and i actually i didn't love it when i was first playing it on my own but then yeah. i did have that experience right. where i played with a few people and we were all playing it together and that was such a fun because it's one of those games where you're like oh well, clearly i'm gonna go here and you hit the button somebody's like why would you do that you're like, yeah. what, what, why would you why would i not yeah. you have that conversation with each other well, and it's funny when you realize you're making the some same dumb mistakes that a horror oh, yeah. movie character would oh, make yeah, yeah, totally, and you're totally. like oh i'm just doing the same thing now i understand yeah, i can't exactly. criticize them uh one of my other main picks would be what remains of edith finch oh yes, yes, yes. uh I, that was the last year that came out um yeah. i it's this sort of sh collection of short stories essentially you're it's a, another first person game was it last year wow that was yeah like early last year okay, i think wow. it was uh you're going through this house and essentially exploring in microcosm the lives of a bunch of different members of a family. And each of those uh, looks at those 
family members play differently. So one, as you see in the trailer, or if you've played it, is you're just on a swing for yeah. the entire time and you're getting the story through what's happening and the dialogue going on. Another takes place in a bathtub. Like there are all these different scenarios that I don't want to spoil, but I love the idea. Like I'm someone who's very obsessed with my own like family history and understanding what these people were like and getting to know about them. And so the idea that you're learning about this family through the experience of their lives directly. Yeah, but it's, it, it's one of those great games too if you're not 100% sure what you're doing while you're yeah. doing it. You're like, oh, why am I doing this and what's happening and how do I play into the story? Yes, yeah, and it's it's fun to see that mystery uncover and not every story in the collection I think works really well necessarily. There sure. are a couple that are kind of duds but they try different genres like one is sort of in the vein of a slasher film and gets told with like comic book panels and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. and then another is just like this heartfelt single look at a character you you can't really move outside of like their location then another is sort of in like a, this weird dream state it, it's beautiful I love that game yeah a it's a great game for sure I mean Giant Sparrow is so talented yes yeah play, un, un, play Unfinished Swan first Unfinished Swan is so great still uh, and then Greg what's another choice from you the one I put on there uh, we already talked a little bit about Resident yes. Evil 7 yeah. Resident Evil 7 when I saw when you're looking at what's a great Halloween game or what's a great spoopy game you go through there and you see Resident Evil 7 you're like I gotta put that on there because again it was I played half of it my campaign I played half of it in VR and the other half out of it and it was great both ways and that was the big question of you know i felt like they had said it's gonna be on playstation vr like, All right. and i remember putting it on in that first opening segment when you look down like the screen door effects really bad on the leaves and stuff i was like oh god and then you know hours later i took it off and the room was pitch black because i had left i'd started in the daylight <laughs> and then i was just sitting in an empty room and i was like wow this is an amazingly scary reinvention of resident evil that i think d does it in such a smart way of cutting so much of the fat off of this game that has just got like what's the lore who is going on where here's a story that you can get behind right you're going there you want to find your wife you have this weird message from her you go back and you try to do it in this house that's full of creeps and full of scares yeah it break it brings the scale down of the franchise after it kept ballooning and ballooning yeah, throughout exactly. it and makes it so much more human too especially like you said with this family at the beginning and they're just gross but they are a family of people and so it's like oh the threat right now is very Familiar in a sense of just, oh, these are just people right now that I have to yeah. deal with. And then as it grows, obviously, in a more Yeah, it gets, it gets more and more unbelievable. Whatever. Yeah, like, by that point, you're like, I'm locked in. Exactly. It was Resident yeah. Evil. It wasn't always going to be. I knew monster. what to expect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you also have another suggestion. I put on here a special shout out, ladies and gentlemen. Coffin Dodgers. Ladies and gentlemen, would you like a platinum trophy in two hours? Well, then. I would. <laughs> Coffin Dodgers is the game for you. Now, I can get you, I can get you platinums a lot faster than two uh, hours. For yeah. The oh, we, you know. we need to talk about that. So. The thing about IGN right now, I remember yeah. listening all the time, and sure. your love of trophies sure. is why I bought a PS3 oh, wow. back in the day. Oh, wow. And I got so into trophies during that era that that was how I decided what games I would buy was, mm. what is the platinum like? What are the sure. trophies like? And there is a just a dearth of people in this office. No one cares about trophies. Monsters. It they bums all, me they all forgot. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's what matters, really. It is what matters. Yeah. You don't even play the game if it's got bad trophies. Yeah. I don't care. What's Red Dead's trophy list? Is it bad? Don't probably. play it then. That's yeah, what you do. Exactly. You probably. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a hard trophy list. probably garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, the PlayStation's kind of really nailed recently trophy lists with God of War and Spider-Man. Yes, like they 100%. Are, they're achievable, but they are still really fun platinums. Yeah, to get that's why there. I can't wait to see Naughty Dog screwed up with The Last of Us Part 2. What, play, what monster trophy list are you going to put on this time, Jorkman? Play, play the online multiplayer for 700 exactly, hours. Exactly, right. I never, both campaigns. Oh, my God. I don't have a platinum because of that. Yeah, exactly. It's one of my life's greatest regrets. Yeah, no. I Yeah, I mean... Yeah, God of War was a great platinum. Spider Man was a great platinum. Yeah. Like uh, Astrobot, I haven't got yet, but I hear is a great platinum. Yeah, me too. That's one. That's my next one. Days Gone is another one I'm interested. Like I'm like I'm very don't screw it up. Too. Yeah. Eric Jensen, don't screw it up. John Garvin, don't screw it up. You know what I mean? What I have get? faith in them. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Jensen, he listens. He knows what's up. He, he knows the trophy yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. And he should still know I love trophies too. Please give me good trophies. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's all we need to ask for. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, those are a few of our recommendations if you need something spooky for this weekend while Halloween is going on. Or if you still happen to have a copy of PT downloaded, just play PT again. I bring that out. I still have it on all my PS4s. Me too. Yeah, I bring, installed before me. I bring that out every Halloween to all of my friends who have never played games and just go like hey just sit down and walk through this hallway for an hour and yeah, see yeah, what yeah. happens i whisper into the controller maybe yeah we'll, we'll see what happens <laughs> no one's pause sure. weirdly in the menu maybe for two hours and yeah, see what yeah, happens yeah. yeah it's a weird thing uh but yeah if you need some recommendations for play that's what we suggest uh coming up obviously we've talked a little bit about red dead redemption 2 happening this week it's coming out if you're listening the day the show comes out there has been a lot of talk and we talked about this last week on the show of the nature of crunch in relation to red dead specifically and then the industry at large so the, all of this sort of really got snowballing because of an interview with uh dan hauser in right. i believe it was Vult uh, new yorker 
Uh, and it was a discussion about sort of the creation of Red Dead Redemption 2 and everything. And there was a quote about 100-hour work weeks. Uh, he later clarified that comment, saying he was only referring to four members. It of was just us on the writing team. Just the writers. Uh, so that was how that comment did. But obviously it, it reignited and has con uh, relaunched what has been a continuing conversation about crunch in the industry. Sure. And then obviously we've seen a lot more happening. We saw that uh, Rockstar allowed its employees to say, uh, talk about their work conditions right. Publicly on Twitter, which is a thing you don't normally hear companies announce that they're doing. Sure. Uh, and then just recently, the day that we're recording this, Jason Trier over at Kotaku released a very in-depth and very long article looking into the nature of working conditions at Rockstar both now and then in the past. Because mm -hmm. it has been sort of a recurring thing in the past for Rockstar games. Of well, Red Dead Redemption is the one that really kicked it up. Yeah. Right? When there was like the spouse letter that was put out. Yes. Yeah. And then I think a lot we saw a lot with L.A. Noir as well. True. And That's true. Yeah. So... That article has come out, and I think it's painted the picture that a lot of us in the office at IGN have talked about it, of this discussion is so multifaceted in the way, like, I think we can all agree, game workers need unions, they need things that protect them, they don't deserve to be forced to work these long hours, but there are these weird things of you get the nature of, nature of the discussion of some people feel the pressures because if it is the four guys at the top, who are making exactly. those It's one of the Hauser like brothers, right, who's then, working the 100-hour work week. Yeah, you're going to feel like, oh, maybe I should be here yeah. more than the hours I'm expected to. Right. Uh, there are anecdotes, and obviously like, uh, every story uh, is told in anonymity in the story from Kotaku, but a lot of it is people saying, like, yeah, it felt like there was this pressure to be there just to be seen working. Yeah, and so it, come in on Saturdays to have a presence. Yeah, come in on Saturdays, stay through lunch often, all these things. Uh, and I just wanted to bring up the discussion because I know you've talked about it a bit on sure. kind of funny and we've talked about it here of just what we're seeing from this article today too and what what do you think it tells us about sort of the larger culture at Rockstar in relation to crunch and especially in Red Dead Redemption 2 right man that's a big question yeah right yeah, no, it off yeah, no small no yeah. small one I mean I think it's it's a ongoing struggle for everyone involved right now in terms of the games industry because that was what was at least heartening about it when it happened is that the uh, it was it vulture or new york or new york or whoever i think they're technically like same company oh, so that makes more yeah, sense yeah uh when the hauser quote got broken out of the story right which was just this giant story clubbing did a great piece on it right of like the problem with this, this is the fact they say this and there's no follow-up to it was there another question was there a pr answer what happened what yeah happened? The, what I liked the most about it that I found you know faith in right was the fact that it got broken out and just got beaten with bats on Twitter where it was just like no 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 this isn't acceptable this isn't something to champion don't do this don't do and you saw so many different developers talking that way about it of like listen we understand that crunch is a thing and it's been happening forever but maybe our culture doesn't have to be that and that's the biggest thing about it and I think you see we talk about what Jason has in his article. We had a kind of funny best friend write in who works at Rockstar, and he did it anonymously as well. And one of the things he said, right, was like, listen, I've never been asked to work a 100-hour work week. I have worked 65 or 80, but that's just... And it was like, as if that didn't matter. As if yeah. 65 to 80 wasn't a crazy amount of work either. Yeah. And then so many people wrote into the shows talking about, well, I work those hours because I love my job and I do this. Are we work shaming? Are we? Do and it's so complex that the crux of the issue is... If you want to work 80 hours a week, if you want to work 100 hours, if you want to make your – awesome. But it's the what we're talking about of you shouldn't feel forced to. Yeah. And how do you not give off that vibe? And what I kept going back to on Games Daily was I feel for them in the same thing. I, 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 I like to imagine Rockstar is not forcing people to work this much. Sure. But I do understand like the, the recent anecdote around the office has been – Usually we take the last two weeks of December off. We're talking about taking just uh, the last week off and a little bit of the first week of January. So as soon as we said that, Kevin was like, oh, man, I was really looking forward to it. And I was like, oh, no, no, take the week off. Like, you know, we can run a skeleton crew. And Kevin's like, well, no, I'm not. And it's like, we're a company of seven. Yeah. And we're way closer than any people should be in terms of <laughs> bosses and employees. Yeah. But the fact that I can't get one of my four employees to stay home when I'm telling him to and I have the little bit of internet power we have. Think of that then at, at, at a rock star. Absolutely. Where yeah. Dan Hauser is in there every Saturday working and writing 100 hours works week. And you're, you're going to be the person that walks by to leave or not come in at all. Like, I get that vibe. And how the, it, no matter what email Rockstar or the Hauser brothers, whoever puts out saying, listen, guys, you don't have to come in this much. Don't do this. 
people are going to lead by, they're going to see the example set by their leader and, and, and replicate it. And go with it. Yeah. yeah. It's also this weird systemic thing of, I think, just our culture in general to be workhorses. Oh, sure. Regardless of, of, we talked about it a bit on the show last week of we at IGN, if we're working on a crazy review, I'm not going to say, well, it's 5 p.m. I'm done working on the Spider-Man review, even though the embargo's tomorrow. I got to go sleep. Like, exactly. Th you feel these pressures to do that because of the nature of the work and it's something that you sign up knowing that's there, but that doesn't inherently make it good or okay. And I saw, I saw some people saying like, well, you're saying it's okay for you guys to do that, but not them. And is that weird complex thing of, no, if there are people genuinely at Rockstar who don't feel pressure to work those hours and want to make Red Dead to the best game they can, I understand that and I don't fault them. That and that's always way. been the common thread, I feel, between games, media coverage and games development, right? Of, you know, I remember working here and being like, yep, last night, 3.30 in the morning, closed out the E3 war room. It was me and Hillary. We took off afterwards, right? And then we came back today at 7 a.m. to do it all over again. And there was that, there's that camaraderie and you're in the trenches together. And I never felt closer or more, like that's where we all bonded, right? Yeah. Was at these like late E3 uh, meetings and writing sessions and all that stuff. And like when Anthony Gaius put up a Frogger preview and I convinced him just to put up an image of a frog that said, it's Frogger, you go across the road, you know what this game is. I love like, that. Right? And I, yeah. that, that was still up for quite some time. I'm not sure if Perry <laughs> took it down. Um, there's in the same way on the other side of it, right? Like Adam Boyce put out that tweet, right? Of like when his first job in the industry, there was a whiteboard where they kept their hours and he had like a hundred something in 20, 120 we'll say. And he was third, third. place for the week. Yeah. And it's like. In the same way, like I remember, like the first time I ever went down to Sony San Diego and talked to, I think Christian Phillips about the show, or maybe it was Ramon or somebody about the show. They were t pointing out, like, oh, this is the mattress I keep behind my thing for during crunch. And like, <laughs> crunch is this expected thing, and people in the so for a long time it's been this, ah, yeah, crunch is great. And now as we are at a point where it is like, okay, cool. We're not just putting out toys. You're not just an elf in a workshop. Like, let's talk about mental health. Let's talk about what's actually like, your art and how you're gonna get the best things. I'm glad we're having this conversation. Yes. And it's that thing of, I don't think we're and the audience and the consumer are equipped necessarily to say, this is how you fix it. This is how you change it. This is what you do. But it is really heartening to see so many people say, don't kill yourself for this. Like, get the game out. We want the game. We want the game to be great. But we don't want you to work in crazy hours and not see your family and do all these things and then like not to take Rockstar out then have a telltale situation happen where these people kill themselves for a game and then the company's like guess what it's over we have nothing no severance by yeah and you're like wait what what was what were all these years of working on these things and having these you know pouring your heart and soul into something and then not having it net out the way you want it to yeah I think <clears throat> excuse me it was interesting seeing those two things happen so close together right. of the telltale closure and Obviously, people coming out of the woodwork and talking just a lot and in detail about the working conditions that they face there, and then also everything going on with this ignited by a single quote, but this rock star yeah. uh, discussion. And yeah. I, I think, like you were saying, we on the other side of it don't know in any office situation. I, we're not equipped to say this is how it should be going there. I do think the most important thing we can do is keep raising the conversation and keep telling people, sure. hey, let's discuss this. Hey, how are things going? And like you said, it is the most heartening thing in the world. One, on the telltale side, to see everyone be like, all these people are out of work. Let us all rally together to try to find them work. And then all these people with the rock star side being like, no, we want Red Dead 2, but we also don't want you to die to make Red Dead 2. Yeah. And it's heartening to see that. Yeah, and it's like, it's, you know, as is everything, it's a learning uh, uh, curve and situation and every day you have to take something different. Because I remember like, the crunch conversation has been going nonstop on our show since then. Yeah. And, you know, somebody wrote in, uh, or no, not even wrote in, somebody mentioned dreams and something else. And immediately I made a joke of like, well, see, and, when I, and it's like, oh, well, no, hey, I'm doing the exact opposite of what I'm saying, yeah. right? Like I'm giving Media Molecule crap because I like Media Molecule and they know that, but it's like, oh no, that's a bad look too. Cause it's not, it can't, it can't work both ways. And Absolutely. then Days Gone got delayed, right? And there was, I thought, a uh, uh, more than usual amount of tweets that were like, Take your time. We'll be here when you're ready, blah, blah, yeah. blah. But there were still people like, duh, whatever, man. You keep pushing. You keep delaying. Blah. And it's like. <sighs> it's it's this weird thing where we live in a society where you can now interact with so many people just day to day yeah. who are making the things you love or are the thing you love. And it's that weird thing of, oh, no, they are people on the other side. Exactly. Of yeah, we have yeah. to breaking down that wall of, oh, no, there are hundreds of people behind this game. There yeah. are. And that was and the, the big, that was the big thing with the Telltale stuff, right? Yeah. Where it was the knee jerk reaction of, "Oh my God, what's going to happen to these people?" If you read the whole article, and yeah. if you just saw the headline, "Oh my God, what's going to happen to the rest?" Are they going to finish the game? Are they going to finish the season? And it's like, 
Well, hold on. That's the back burner question. Yes. Like, yeah. I, I want to know how Clementine's story ends too, but I don't want these people who don't have anything medical coverage after this week to, you know. Exactly. We, li that. we live in a society where every single thing is either rebooted or continued these days. Like, yeah. Clementine's story will probably continue for the next 10 decades. Yeah. We want to make sure these people's <laughs> lives will yeah. continue. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's a very weird discussion to have because there's no easy way to say that what that person did was wrong for working 80 hours. That person was also wrong for working 80 hours when that person wanted to and felt right. comfortable to and was paid overtime. We, we just never know the full scope of every individual case. And it was the same thing, the same conversation we've had about this crunch stuff where it keeps getting talked about every day on every one of the daily shows we do. Yeah. And somebody wrote in of like, just, are we doing going about this the wrong way, right? And they were like, uh, gamesindustry.biz just put up this article about these UK awards where uh, Media Molecule and someone else, I forget off the top of my head, had won awards for being great workspaces. Oh, rock steady in great places to work and this and other. You're not talking about that in the Roper Report. You're not bringing that up in the news. And you're like, that's a great point, right? Yeah. Like, we're not celebrating the people that are doing it right. We're only talking about it when it pops up the people that are doing it wrong. Yeah. I saw Insomniac Games was awarded recently for like the third year in a row or something like that of being one of the best places to work. Sure. On a certain they got lesson. a volleyball court. Yeah. Oh, they do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember nice. when, I remember years ago when they put out I, <laughs> IGN's, we're covering everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. They put out the uh, recruitment, come work at Insomniac. Uh, okay. like, oh, we got a volleyball court. Put that out. <laughs> the, the high points of working yeah, of in some yeah, games. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things I think we, I'm very con cognizant of wanting that conversation to continue on beyond as well. And it is heartening to see it and listen to it continue on kind of funny sure. as well as all this goes on. That said, it's also, we're covering Red Dead Redemption 2 as a game. Yeah. And that's well, that, out that, in a few days. Right. It's that weird back and forth. Yeah. Uh, and so it feels silly to almost jump right into that. But I am curious as we approach Red Dead Redemption 2's final release, we're obviously we've been seeing these mountains of expectation rise. Yeah. And G GTA 5, I'm curious what you think on this. GTA 5 continues to be one of the biggest games in the world. It's always in the top 10 MPD. It's never selling. going anywhere. It's never. And GTA yeah. Online is this ever-present, consistent thing with millions of players that always gets updates and is this big, to me also, like very more fast-paced and fully fleshed out thing that you can experience in the way that I'm curious to hear what you think about will GTA 5 and GTA Online fans like Red Dead? Because at least from the outside, uh, looking at what we've seen from preview events and trailers and everything, yes, that you can rob a, a train yeah, in yeah. Red Dead. You can go with your gang and investigate this small town and maybe partner up with people or whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, you're still in the Wild West. It is still a slower, more spaced out world. Right. And I'm curious if that will... People may not be expecting it, but might be detracted from that. I mean, I think the big the the thing that delays you, or stops you from answering the question, if not delay, just delays you, is what is Red Dead Online? Yeah, like that is the question. I I would venture to guess a lot of people who play GTA Online, the millions and millions of people that keep buying it, and you know, literally buying the game again to get the shark card at a cheaper <laughs> price to play. Yeah. Like I would wonder how many of them have beaten the GTA 5 campaign, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not that's not why so many of them are playing GTA Online. They're playing GTA Online to play with their friends and their crew and do this and do a heist and do a robbery and like be around people. It's 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 almost and not it's not there yet, but it's almost how Call of Duty was for the longest time of I'd be one of these weirdos like, I like playing the single player and I yeah. never touch multiplayer. Yeah. Where so many people are the exact opposite of, oh my God, I'm playing multiplayer for weeks and then maybe I'll touch it on a weekend when I'm, when my friends are away or doing something. Once we know really what Red Dead Online looks like, I think you'll be able to spin that question. And it, But it will be interesting to see at launch if the GTA 5 online people are going to come, all right, well, you know, new Rockstar game, it's Red Dead, it's eventually going to get it, I'll buy and give it a chance right away, or if they're going to wait and see. Because yeah. yeah, like... It gets to a point with a game like GTA Online, right, where you've sunk so much time into it, so much money into it that, oh, cool, there's another thing out. I'm not jumping until I need to jump, yes. until my crew jumps. Yeah. And that is, you bring up the great point of, like, everything we've seen of Red Dead is a Wild West spaced out, you know, very open, whereas, like, GTA's thing is it's Los Santos and it's ah, packed in. There's something everywhere. Every corner has something to do or enact on. And uh, for me, it's not that I don't think people will want the pace and the setting in the world of GTA yeah. or uh, Red Dead instead of GTA. Obviously, we know Jared Petty will always be in Red Dead Online for the rest of his life. Well, yeah, he's just gonna he's gonna digitize his brain and yeah. put like a black mirror. In the yeah, uh, Hop, Lip, and Jump will be in there. Yeah, yeah, it'll be inside the Red Dead world. But I'm curious of just what we're going to see from online, we obviously know very little about it, but I'm, there will be, obviously they want to cram a lot in there for people to do, but at the end of the day, you're not jumping in a car, throwing it off a bridge and then going into a bank heist where then you walk into. A and that's the question too, of like GTA online's found success and rockstar has been open about this, right? Of like, 
it's found success by listening to the audience and okay, cool. Oh, you want this, and that's why like heist took so long because they were taking other people's feedback in. Yeah. How crazy are they going to get with Red Dead? Like, you know, GTA, like, even when we were like, we should make a concerted effort to play this more, and me and Kevin played it for like a month. It was like, they got a flying DeLorean here. <laughs> yes, I need to get that. How do I earn the money? We got a heist. All right, cool. Like, are you going to have crazy flying horses? Are you going to get nuts and have weird bomber jackets for your character? Like, or are you going to be like, no, no, this is an anchored Westworld kind of thing? Right? Yeah. Well, we've talked about that idea. Speaking oh, of right. Westworld, uh, <laughs> uh, Undead Nightmare was obviously right. a beloved thing for Red Dead. So good. Online is presumably the place where you can easily be like, yeah, every Halloween, everyone's yeah. a zombie. All of a sudden you have to fight that. Or every yeah. Christmas, yeah, there's like an evil Santa bear and there's a lot of reindeer you have to fight yeah, and they're yeah, evil. Yeah, yeah. Like they could do that seasonally with all these updates. And I, I see that as a way to extend the life of Red Dead Online. But yeah, it is that curious thing of they've talked about before launch, they see both as existing at the same time. Right. They don't think Red Dead Online will replace GTA Online. I don't either, yeah. but I but I also in the same breath don't know if Red Dead Online is going to find success. Or I mean, I, let me let me take that back. I don't think Red Dead Online is going to find <laughs> the success GTA Online had because that's insane. Yeah. But also, will it fi- will it pull enough people away to go there and do that? Right. Yeah. Like I, so many people that I see excited for Red Dead are excited for Red Dead Redemption Two because of the story and because they loved Red Dead Redemption originally. And sure, those same people might have had fun in Red Dead Redemption Online, but I don't think they're the same people that are obsessed with GTA Online right now. Yes, yeah. yeah. It, it'll be really curious to see. I was someone who, very much like you, played the Call of Duty campaigns, jumped into GTA Five and played the campaign for a bit, but I didn't really do much online yeah. after a while because it is that thing of, oh, this is a world I can live in. This yeah. is an experience. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the allure of being able to live out your Westworld Red Dead fantasy of being a cowboy for hundreds of hours will attract people. I'm just very curious to see what the pace of that all is. Me too. Yeah, it'll be very fascinating when that comes out. Uh, so that's pretty much all of the main topics we have for the show this week, Greg. All right, good having you. But, but, but before you go, no, no, please, please. I know I, I sort of ended there. Uh, we have a little bit of rapid fire. Ooh. Our question round for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of questions. We tried to anchor them. Uh, our wonderful producer, Barrett, chose these questions. So if Barrett you don't Courtney. like the questions, you can blame I've me. heard a lot of rumors about him on the internet. He's a bad game. But gamer. he begged me to stop saying them on podcasts. I'll stop Say them as much as you want. Find uh, a way trust to. Trust me. <laughs> no, you don't <laughs> oh, want no. that, do you, Barrett? <laughs> I do. Anyway, we'll move on to the first question. Uh, Steven Scothorn says, do you guys think any of the games released earlier this year even have a chance against Red Dead 2? So tying a little bit into it. So I, I'm going to take that as both sales and critically. Let's. Oh, say. okay. Yeah. I thought we were just talking about game of the year. I, right, I, right, I, right. I would say critically game of the year wise. Critic- I think I think it's going to right now. I think it's without knowing Red Dead review scores and what barometers are going to be on that. Yeah. I think it's Red Dead versus God of War. Yeah. Right for game of the year, and I and then I think there's a contingent of Celeste people out there. Yes, I'm Tom sure there's Marks. a lot of Spider-Man people who want to cheer for that too. Oh yeah, but I think really when you get down to one-on-one, who is it going to be? It's going to be Red Dead versus God of War. Yeah, and I think God of War. I mean, right? I mean, well, I, I guess I can't speak to Red Dead, right? Because I haven't the, the review of, haven't done it. But like God of War, up until Friday when Red Dead comes out, whatever may or may not happen, <laughs> uh, God of War is my game of the year. Has Same. been my game of the year, right? So it's like. I think that game is just so special in the way that even platinuming Spider-Man, right? Some of the crimes at the end, you're like, all right, can we just get, all right, it's another Sable. All right, great. Okay. Yeah. Whereas like God of War was, I give me it all and I did it all and I platinumed it and I finished it and I put the controller down and I was like, that was so perfect. I don't want DLC. I don't want something that's not half-assed, but like isn't full-fledged from the ground up. This is what they wanted. Whereas, you know, God of War was just, Every every moment every moment had a purpose. Yes. In the boat had yeah. a, even the boats like uh, the amount of times I'd come up to a shore and not get out of the boat and just keep listen. talking. Yeah. Keep talking. Yes, please. Mamir can say as much as he wants. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's crazy the intention of that world. Yes, exactly. That's a great in. point, right? Yes. Never a wasted moment. Yes. And absolutely. so how Red Dead then counteracts that with a giant open world and a sprawling story will be fascinating. To see. Yeah, I'm very curious to see, and I think that'll probably be a lot of discussion we'll have both probably on the show and just IGN. Oh, so there'll be a probably. lot of shouting in rooms. So I remember oh, yeah. game of the year here was terrible. <laughs> Can't wait for it. Uh, moving on to the next question. Daniel Wright asks, how did the Spider-Man cameo of Greg come about? Did you know about it ahead of time? Was it official or just a nod? Greg, what what are they talking about? Spy- I don't know I don't... what you're talking about. I, I know that I take photos of a yes. man named Shirtless Spider-Man. Yeah. And uh, Shirtless Spider-Man is, in fact, in Spider-Man PlayStation. Yes. Uh, a great scene with him in it. Yes. For the, the, for the purposes of this conversation, just to not insult him, I'll say yes. <laughs> I'm Shirtless Spider-Man. For the purposes of this conversation. Of course. No. It's no, hypothetical. No. Hypothetical. Uh, gotcha. 
So, yeah, uh, Shirtless Spider-Man came around in the game incredibly organically. Uh, it's funny. I don't think we ever told this story. It's weird. That is, uh, <laughs> uh, like, what it was is, yeah, that I t- put up the, f- I went to a, a Spirit Halloween store last year, and uh, they had the Spider-Man Homecoming mask, and I bought it, and Nick Scarpino looked at me, and he's like, that was a waste of money. You're never going to use it. And I was like, we'll see about that. <laughs> and so I went back to the office. It's kind of funny, and uh, took one photo of me. It was when it was incredibly hot here, and I was wearing shorts, which I never do, so I had pasty wet legs, as I do. <laughs> kind of funny shirt, doing this, and the, sh- the Spider-Man mask on. And Insomniac immediately loved it so much that they hit me up and were just like, oh, my God, this is so funny. And then I escalated it by taking my shirt off and making a sexy song for Andy, Andy Cortez, and then making more stuff. And, like, from the beginning, it, it, really early on, Insomniac was like, this is awesome. Like, That's we great. would love to put it in the game. Would you be down to put it in the game? I'm like, yeah, totally. And so there were many of, uh, we're trying to get it approved. All right, it's not approved. It's not. Blah, 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 blah. And so finally I, it ended up that I thought it was dead. I had heard it was dead. And oh, it was all It was all over. And... A couple months before the game came out, I got a, a text from a friend in Insomniac. I was like, dude, I just ran into you in the game, and it's hilarious. And I was like, what are you talking about? I thought it was dead. Yeah. And they're like, no, they found a way to put you in a party scene. And so in my head, what that meant was, okay, yeah, you're going to play a party scene as Peter, and you're talking to somebody, and in the background, like through there, like you'll look and you'll see a shirtless Spider-Man. Sure. And, you know, I eventually at Comic-Con hosted a panel and talked to some people there and it was clear it was a little bit more and this and the other. And like, I was like, oh, OK. And then, yeah, one night, like I was like, all right, cool. And it was like, all right, I'm playing through for review. And sure enough, he's like, all right, you got to go to this costume party. I was like, oh, my gosh, here it comes. <laughs> and I'm like, I wonder if it'll be hard to find me. Yeah. And sure enough, it's main path. You You're right the there. Hey, yeah. Spider-Man, look, yep. we're Spider-Bros. You know what I mean? I was like, wow, yeah. that was insane. Like, and it was funny because at San Diego Comic-Con, it was this weird thing of I didn't want to say that I knew because I wasn't sure who knew and I wasn't sure what rules and who approved it. So yeah. I was just dead quiet about it. So yeah. I was talking to somebody and uh, it was Jacinda who's in charge of the art came over and she was just like, oh, hey. And, and I think it was James like, have you ever met Greg before? And she's like, not officially, but I know him very well. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> she's like, I have been looking at na- uh, shirtless photos of you for quite some time. That is. And when they say that, you're like, oh, that's funny. And then when you play the game, like it is my chest hair pattern yeah. and it's like, it's very much my gut. And I was like. Oh, I feel so bad for Jacinda. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate to admit she it. Had like, to stare at me. <laughs> I double checked just to be like, I I knew it immediately that it was intended to be. Sure yeah, 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 but I was like, let me check, and I was like, oh wow, this is a lot more accurate than I expected. Yeah, no, and totally. Boy, and so yeah. that's been the really, really funny thing about that joke is that. Obviously, if you know it, you get it. And then other people who don't and just think it's funny to see a fat shirtless Spider Man exactly. are putting stuff up about that. It's yeah. great. Well, that was. Thank you for that hypothetical. Oh yeah, just it, it, maybe that's how and, it would have happened. Yes. But I don't know who he is. I just take his photos. It's okay. Well, I appreciate you taking those photos because they're often great. You're welcome. Moving on, Eric Lewis asks if Spider-Man was just the beginning for new Marvel games, which games are you hoping to see next? Man, one for me is just I want a good X-Men game. Oh, can you imagine? I just yeah. And that—that's the thing with like you know them buying back the rights and doing all this stuff and like yes, please like I I will live. I will stand by it forever. X-Men Origins Wolverine is a terrible movie, but such a fun video game. Yes. And again, storyline sucks in it, all these different things, but that was Raven, man, and they got it of like, we're going to make this hardcore, like you can get blasted down to just the adamantium skeleton, right? And then yeah. watch it grow back. And it's like, if I'm Marvel Games, if I'm Bill Roseman over there, right? Like I would be like, cool, we're, we can do this and make a cool X-Men team game, sure, but make a hardcore Wolverine game and not like gory bloody but like a real like we're gonna tell a great story with him that'd be awesome yeah and like I I just I get gun shy around teams because I want everybody to have enough time it's tough even the Crystal Avengers game it's like what is that you you hear a rumor every so often you're like what is it yeah like what is the scope of that team gonna be yeah Yeah, like how much are you actually gonna be able to feel like those characters and yeah. not just have one power each of them or something like you get into that x-men legends or yep. marvel ultimate alliance which yep. i love playing oh, those they games. were great I played them a bunch but it is that thing of at the end of the day every character sort of has to be distilled into these buckets exactly and, it's so, so and, much and like you know and when we all watched anthem we were like oh we can be iron man we could have a full-blown iron man game given to a triple a studio to focus on and think about that and yeah like, the suits you'd get and the powers and all this different stuff and outside of that i you know i want to see it i'll get wacky i've kicked this around a lot 
and it probably won't happen. But I do say there are too many squirrels in Spider-Man PlayStation 4 for one of the okay. DLCs not to involve Squirrel Girl. That, I, get I feel that. like that's a long... They, they put way too much technology into animating <laughs> into these the squirrels, squirrels not to have that pay off somewhere. That would be... Uh, maybe Spider-Man 2. You may have to wait a little Maybe. Long. You know what yeah. I mean? But yeah, like I would I would do solo stuff and I would do... like I, Again, like w w a cool Captain America game. Like Take anybody really from the MCU. Obviously spin them in your own way. Of course. But do something with that. And even, even if you wanted to do a team, Fantastic Four, right? That'd be a cool one of like, here's four people that you really get to worry about the powers of. Yeah, I think if they jump into an X-Men game for me, it's very much like distill it down to a certain group of the X-Men. Like yeah. one, pick one team that the, that developer really wants to build up and have it be that five people and not, we have 30 of the X-Men here and they all kind of have the same powers. And they're all like, yeah, they're all right. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It's good enough. Yeah, I think seeing the success of Spider-Man Marvel games, I think understands what people oh, yeah. loved about it. And yeah, stuff. totally. They they got a great team over there. I'm excited to see what happens two, three years out for Marvel games. Uh, going forward, Zach David asks, what breaking news will be announced after this episode stops recording? Every damn week. Like Wednesday night. Dude, I know. Wednesday morning, Tuesday night. PlayStation announces something. Of course. I it hate happens. It. And, it ha don't, and no matter where you move the show, trust me. From exactly. Years of oh, experience yeah, I was going to say. No matter where you move the show, something's going to happen. Was there ever any like sweet spot day you felt? Or was it always just... <sighs> no. I mean, we always liked the Tuesday release, right? Because yeah. it made sense with the PSN store at the time because they were, you know, that was such a big deal. Like, remember, I don't know if you remember this, oh, but yeah. it, was, it used to be Thursdays and then PSN's like, you know what? We're going before Microsoft. And it was like, oh man, bold move. <laughs> like, no, it never worked out. Yeah, and now there's so many Friday releases, so if you go too early, Nope. There, you may miss embargoes for later in the of week. Of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's such a sliding scale of insanity yeah. trying to get it's, anything covered it's anymore. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, that's fun. That's yeah, the way to put it. Yeah. That's what I live for. It'll be uh, probably the PlayStation 5. Well, that was always the thing, you know, and I'm sure you know better than most with all the new stuff. Like, the hardest part I always felt of working at IGN and being, you know, the number one video game website, and especially when, we own, when I owned the PlayStation team and I was in charge of it, was that you never got to turn it off. And even with the AU or UK teams, I understand there's different rotating hours, but it always was, I can't tell you the amount of times it was like, all right, time to turn in. And I would check Twitter and be like, why did I check Twitter? All right, I'm up. I'm writing a news story. I'm contacting uh, Sony's PR to ask about this thing because there's this leak and da 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 yep. Just so you can put in there, we reach out to some comment. Yeah, we haven't exactly. heard anything yet. I mean, that was the thing of like the PlayStation Classic a couple weeks ago. I came out of a movie and I saw the tweet. And my first instinct was like, okay, check Slack, check email, yep. check, make sure yeah, yeah. something's handled. Someone's got to be on this. Yeah, right? or I'm yeah, getting yeah. home and that's what I'm doing. Tonight. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. a very weird thing. So I look forward to them doing that every week just to screw with us. Sure. Yeah. No matter where we move, the show it'll happen. Uh, Steven Turbel asks, please ask him if he's verified on Instagram. I hate you. That's the whole I hate question. You, Steven, oh, you're such a. I hate you, Steven. That's all we got. Uh, moving on, Anthony Argain asks, how is the kind of funny sh video showcase coming along? Can you give us a podcast beyond exclusive sneak peek of what to expect? <laughs> Love kind of funny beyond. Yeah, you want to just tell us all the announcements here? Sure, no yeah, problem. Perfect. No, yeah. if you don't know, yeah. So yeah, tell we're us. doing something called the kind of funny game showcase. Uh, what that means is I've always loved how the Game Awards on Thursday kicks off this amazing week and yeah. if not week of content, right? Where it's Game Awards, Friday was a day off, and then Saturday and Sunday were PSX. And Saturday always opened with that really cool keynote of, I'm Adam Boys, and here's Geo Corsi with a Vita, and here's a whole bunch of cool stuff for you, the fans. That was often into your smaller titles, because Game Awards is, Game Awards is the Super Bowl. It's, yeah. it's WrestleMania, right? Oh, yeah. Like So it was like, here's Triple A headliners. Here's Kojima doing something. Here's a Last of Us trailer. Yeah. And then PSX got to be the hey, here's a cool indie you know. Hey, here's we're bringing back Shemu. Yeah. Here's you know what I mean? Like they did cool stuff like that. And so when PlayStation announced this year, no PSX, we're taking the year off. I jumped on it of just like, hey, I totally, the first off, great call. I'd much rather that than get a watered down PSX oh, that everybody hates. Absolutely. But I knew from talking to people that people are working on stuff with the idea that there was going to be a PSX. So I was like, you know what? We'll do our own press conference. We're going to do the Kind of Funny Game Showcase uh, Saturday morning, December 8th uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific time till it looks like it's going to be 10 a.m. to noon. Oh, wow. Looks like it's going to be two hours of okay. uh, video games, announcements, uh, new stuff. Uh, the idea, what I, keep, what I keep saying is I want to set everybody's expectations again. Of course. Jeff, Game Awards, grandest stage of them all, <laughs> WrestleMania. You know what I mean? We are not second rung, but this is, I, right now it ranges from, hey, I am a one-man development team making this game to, hey, we're a we're a AAA third-party publisher that wants to show one of our games there, right? So there's a breath there, but we are definitely way more towards, hey, we're a bunch of indies, and yeah. there's a bunch of indies that are making cool things. So the, I guess, beyond exclusive, right, would be that it's <laughs> going to be, looks like it's going to be two hours long. Uh, I was really hoping you were going to say 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. Oh, I mean, on, like <laughs> you could. 
Uh, it's yeah. one of those every time I we have a, a <clears throat> weekly meeting that I'm missing to record for Beyond, oh. uh, and it is every Sorry, time Joe. I talk to it, the number of games goes up. Like we're talking, yeah. I'm I'm not being uh, facetious here or hyper, hyper, hyperbolic. Nope, nope. Hyperbolic is like a chamber you put somebody into. No, no you're yeah. All right. Yeah, hyperbole. Hyperbole, but yeah. there. What am I trying to say? It, Oh no! Yeah, you know what I'm right. trying to say. Oh wow! Oh, no, yeah. maybe it is hyperbolic. Also. No, no, is it not? No, hyperbolic chamber and then. Oh yeah, but what what goes on in a hyperbolic chamber? Yeah, no, it's like you get the iron lungs, so you don't get the bends when you oh, come up, right? Okay. I'm not over exaggerating <laughs> when I say dozens and dozens of games. Okay. Like right now, like I have a spreadsheet and I think it's down up to sixty. And I'm like, well, the they all make doesn't. it, and like, yeah, Lisa Baker's dozen. Yeah. There's a ton of stuff, and it's and my idea is that to be in the kind of funny game showcase, it's that your game's cool. Uh, you have something new to say. Like in for most people that means release dates. Uh, for most people or most people it's release dates. It's hey you we've never talked about this game. Here we're announcing a new video game, yeah. and then there are a surprising amount of and it's available now. Like people that are going to release their game on oh, our wow. day with our showcase. Oh, so awesome. it's like it's going to be an awesome fun day to celebrate video games yeah. and continue that on right because I don't want to I for one day for one year <laughs> I want to step in and fill that gap so next year PlayStation can come and do it again and Jeff can continue to do everything awesome with the Game Awards or if they take off you could just do the showcase number two i'll tell you what <laughs> knowing how much work this is right now i don't Maybe know not. about that <laughs> i get that i uh barrett and i talked about it in a convo on ign i just want to reiterate i love that you guys are doing this i think it's just an awesome way to one fill that gap but two to just like you said celebrate games like sure. it is this really nice end of your cap usually with game wars and psx and I be mean, able to have that still I'm, I'm sure you see it too it's always crazy to me that when I go to a PAX and I see all these indie games at the mega booth or I see something small and these people and these crappy developers and then you come back and I talk about a show or I share it with Tim or I talk to Jared and then people are like, oh, I don't even know what that is. And it's like, right, if I hadn't gone and been in the mega booth, I wouldn't know what that game is either. And yeah. that game's coming out in two weeks, right? Like, I hate that. And I'm lucky enough that, you know, IGN made me and gave me a following and a personality and now a business and a company and gave me a platform. And I want to use that to showcase people that deserve to have their game showcased. And yeah. like the, um, the stuff we are getting is awesome. And the announcements we are getting, I'm like, wow, this is way better. I, I, really, <laughs> I, I was really ready for a 15, 20 minutes of like, hey, guys, it's us. Here's a trailer. See you later. You know what I mean? And totally. like, it is this thing now that has spiraled up. And like when Game Informer was talking about it on their podcast, I'm like, I guess we'd send somebody. And I'd like write to them like, there's no, you don't need to send anybody. It's yep. just an internet thing. It's like a PSX meets a Nintendo Direct somewhere in the yeah. middle. Like you, you can watch it from home. It'll be fine. You're not going to have 50 uh, journalists in your studio. No, just, no, thank God. No, geez, Louise. <laughs> uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. I think a lot of the beyond audiences and a lot of us here at IGN are like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to come in on Saturday, but it'll be fun. It'll yeah. Be well, yeah. We're do, do, do reaction streams to it. Do everything. Yeah, like, I want to see everybody doing everything with it. Yeah. We're very excited for it too, and I can't wait to see what you guys show off. Uh, speaking of though, talking about a little bit further back looking, Mario Not Bros. Asks, oh, Mario, what up? What's your favorite podcast beyond memory? And he, oh, he left a more general, yeah, so I can talk to you about like old memories as a listener. Obviously, I think for me, the uh, Jeff Haynes pees his pants yeah, is a yeah, big one for me. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the. <laughs> I always forget about Jeff Haynes pees his pants. pants. And then once in a blue moon, Jeff and I will come into contact because he's still in the industry doing yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I'll tweet out a photo or something. And then the first couple of responses will be, and I'm like, right, that's why we probably don't talk that much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeff Haynes probably having that brought up all the time. Yep. Yeah, there's that for sure. I that mean, it's like, it's crazy. First off, to think about. I did 381 episodes. Yeah. Obviously, I missed a bunch because I'd do something here or there. I'd be on a trip or whatever. But I was on episode one to 381. And now to look and see 564, yeah. the fact that it's gone on. and Because, you know, it feels like we left yesterday. Sure. In, in, in one hand, it feels like we left yesterday. In another hand, it feels like a decade ago. Yeah. But it's yeah. like to see how it's continued to go and also... I mean, yeah, sure, of course. Uh, yeah, Jeff Haynes peeing his pants. Like the, the, early the PSN days. being oh, yeah. back well, up no, is, of course. You just shut up. I got it. I got things all right, to say. All right, don't I'm worry saying it's fan. I'll let you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. Colin and I came in and got drunk, and the PSN was back, and like we were watching the PlayStation blog map light up that, like, I think Ray Gutierrez and Jeff Rubenstein <laughs> were doing by hand to like to put up, and oh then as it rolled out, and calling Kelly. Or yeah. Zach oh, Kelly. yeah. It's Kelly. <laughs> uh, that was amazing. Uh, yeah, the early early days are so crazy because. I mean, like, it the, to walk around now, it's that weird thing of, like, oh, I'm back. And then it's like, oh, I don't know anybody. Well, oh, this is still the same, but that's very different. And, like, 
like you talk about the early days of being in the old Brisbane office and yeah. you know like when Clements came on for the first time and everybody was like he says um too much we hate him you know what I mean and like there's that uh, Undertaker busting through the wall like the mm. fan art we would get like you know it, it's so weird to think about now because obviously I make a career now out of being a personality and having this audience and the best friends and like when we started doing Beyond and podcasts were a thing even Game Scoop with Damon right we were shooting it off into space and having no idea if people were connecting with it or listening to it. Cause you remember I'm sold that I, the IGN didn't have comments when I worked here. Sure. Like, you know, you'd write an article or review and you'd go to the board and post the link there. <laughs> yeah. And then somebody would tell you, you suck. And you're like, all right, see you later. Thanks. Yeah. And hope you enjoy this PSP review. <laughs> You didn't understand the impact you're having on people's lives. So yeah. when you would we'd get the fan art, when people would make their own shirts, when we would say something stupid, like and I'd joke about Undertaker busting through the wall and somebody would draw, you know, like busting through the wall and Clement's dead on the table and him choke slamming Colin or whatever. Like it was crazy. So like yeah. watching all that build was amazing. Uh, you know, for me, the live beyonds always stand out, right? Yeah. Like I remember being in this room, in this corner, for Beyond 150 mm -hmm. when we debuted the shirt. Because that's crazy, too. We got to episode 150 and didn't have a logo. <laughs> nobody <laughs> nobody thought through making logos. So I, sure. I hired, uh, I hired I, you know, we cut Javi Rodriguez a check, <laughs> a fan who did Game oh, Scoop yeah. TV for a long yeah. time, to make this logo that got used forever up until real recently. Yeah. Uh, and it was just like, you look back at this thing and it's crazy, the legs it had, the fact that beyond with an exclamation point is the thing because I sh I said it on the first episode. Yeah. You know what I mean? Scoop was the one and I was just copying uh, Game Scoop because I was a fan of Game Scoop. Yeah. And it became a thing that I would yell and annoy people because I was too loud when I did it. You know what <laughs> I mean? But yeah, the live ones doing them here, right? right? Like, I'll never forget after Beyond 200, like, it was very much, it's kind of like your wedding day, yeah. where there's so much planning for it, you got there and it was gone in the blink of an eye. And I remember coming off stage at Beyond 200 and we showed the first uh, Panda Musk, Danny uh, music video, oh, yeah. a, a mashup. And the lights came back up and one of the uh, fans came out of the audience and hugged me and he was crying. And I was like, is everything okay? Like, what's wrong? And he's like, this is just so special. And it all happened so fast, I didn't know. Yeah. And so for 300, it was very much like, I'm going to lean into it and remember every moment of it. And that led to me crying like a baby <laughs> all the time. But like yeah. bringing shoe out, right? And doing all these different things. And again, I know it's a tale of two worlds, but when we were building it and didn't know we were building it, like you, you didn't see the fruits of that. So I remember, I think it was beyond 300 Roper came back for, and Roper had left like in the nineties, maybe the early one hundreds, like mm -hmm. before one fifty, before the logo, yeah. before anything. Cause one fifty was when I was like, all right, cool. I've been host long enough. Everybody understands it's me, Clements, Colin. They understand like what it is. Like I'm making a shirt. I'm making a thing out of it. And when Roper came back, I think for 300, but it might've been 200, doesn't matter. Uh, we went to Pete's uh, over by the ballpark afterwards, right? And I'll never forget, like it was, it was an hour of people walking in and like going beyond and then the whole place, and it, was, it was all of us. And I remember talking to Chris and he got a phone call from his wife and he walked over and he came back and I'm like, hey man, is everything okay? He's like, yeah, I just had to tell her like, I, I'm not coming home and I can't tell you, I can't express it right now what this is, but this is, I have, this is, I can't leave this. I can't, yeah. like he couldn't believe what he was seeing. You know what I yeah. mean? And now we all take it for granted because we get to go to PAX and do amazing, they're kind of funny prom or live or whatever. Like it's normal. But at the time, especially for him, somebody who left before we it ever ballooned. saw what was really happening on the other side of the earphones, it yeah. was crazy to come back to. Yeah, I think having like seen that journey as the pair, I never came, I was able to come to the live shows, uh, cross country flights are expensive, sure, you but yeah, yeah. Uh, it was one of those things. I remember meeting you at PAX East 2011 and I was walking down the hallway to go to the game scoop live that was happening. Yeah. And you were just like sitting at the end of the hallway on a laptop and I like, I'm walking down and you like could tell I was this very like timid sheepish like kid walking yeah. and like could recognize you and you're like, Hey, like who are you? And you talked to me for like 10 minutes, just like earnestly and everything. Yeah. And then, went to the panel, went to E3 later that year and you recognized me and I'm like, oh, that's what's special about all of this is that like you guys gave a damn. That oh, sure. Everything yeah, mattered yeah, yeah. to you of not just, we're here to make a show and get all these cool followers and sell these t-shirts. Like no, that wasn't the goal ever yeah. for you guys. And I, the earnestness and the sincerity of all of that always came through so much. Thank I you. Think. I mean, I hope I, it still does. You know what I mean? Like I, I think nothing makes me happier than when I'll see a Reddit thread or a comment or a Twitter or whatever, or even people talking, you know, some, just talking somewhere else. of just like, I never bought the best friend business. I used to say that on Beyond. I used to sure. say on GameScoop, right? Yeah. I think I remember the episode of GameScoop where it was <laughs> when I 
was getting divorced. And I finally confessed that uh, me and Damon alone in the old podcast room with Solius. <laughs> and I, I talked about that. And it was like, you know, if you listen to this, you're my best friend. And I think obviously it's funny. <laughs> it's funny because this is what I'm talking about, a building something you didn't know. Sorry, I'm going on forever. No, no. I don't please. know if you know I'm long winded. Uh, when, I, when IGN sent me to my first VidCon and I went there and I went into a room, it was like they were like explaining how to become a YouTube star, like not even a star, but how to make a business on YouTube. And they were very much like, have a catchphrase, call your audience something. And I was like, oh my God, I've been doing all this <laughs> organically. No wonder so many people think it's all marketing, yeah, that it is yeah. just this. And it, when it, in reality, it was like, nope, I, you know, the way I wrote reviews and the way I podcast or talk about video games is very much how I talked to my best friend Poe when I told them what I thought of Sp never saw Spider-Man on PS1 in my basement. And I still <laughs> see him on the couch and I still see me in my chair and I still see me with the disc talking about why this game was great. Yeah. And for me, I, you know, I used to be that I could, t I responded to every PSN message and I responded to every tweet. And like those days are gone sadly because of just how busy it is. Of course. Yeah. But like, I still, I still think I'm pretty good at faces. Yeah. And so it is that fact that I can still be like, Oh yeah. And I was looking through my phone even, you know, on a flight, there was no Wi-Fi or whatever, so I was like, oh, I should delete photos. And I was deleting old stuff, like, you know, tweets or something you never did. Yeah. But I go to the very beginning, and I go, and I still have, if I took a photo of you and me at a PAX or whatever, they're still on there. And yeah. I still remember those people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, and I, I'll i never remember your name, because I'm terrible of with course, names. Of course, no, yeah. But I remember your face, and I remember this moment, I remember this thing, you know what yeah. I mean? And I, that's, that's what it's all about, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's why I'm just so blessed every day for what we do. Yeah, I mean, you saying... The, obviously the timing now is a bit more difficult, but being able to respond to every tweet and all of that, you said that I think on a show at some point whenever, and that stuck with me so much that even the first time I wrote something on a public website and someone responded to it ever since then, I've been like, oh yeah, I should be responding to them. I should be keeping sure. up because it's the fact that you did that for me changed my life in so many ways. And so to be even slightly nice to someone else like sure. out there and just to say a thank you. To well, say I mean, that's the thing about it difference. that like, I mean, you have that power, you know, yeah. and you probably don't think you do or don't think about it. Right. Yeah. Cause I didn't for the longest time and I still don't, but it's that it is that the amount of times I'm picking up my dog's poop and I'm looking at Twitter and I heart a thing or whatever. Yeah. And somebody quote tweets it or whatever. And like I'm, ha I'm freaking out and I'm like, I'm just a normal person yeah. holding my dog's poop. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? But like yeah. people don't see it that way. And I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I love the relationship I have with the audience and I don't want that to change, but I, I also don't want it to ever be that like, ah, oh, he doesn't care. You know, I, I still read every Reddit thread, <laughs> every subreddit thread I'm in and you're seeing, right? Of and course, like, I still yeah. pour through the comments and I still look at all the stuff and I'm not as active as I'd like to be on a lot of it. And sometimes I don't want to be at all because I want you to have that conversation. And I organically want to see people talk it out without me getting involved. Yeah. But like, that's what this is all about. And that's what it's always been about building a community, whether it be uh, beyond, whether it be IGN, whether it be kind of funny. Yeah. And thank you for doing that through all these years. Like personally for me, obviously there are a lot of people out there who say it to you every day, but genuinely thank you so much for everything before I was at IGN and to be able to talk to you right now on this show is a I mean, very thank weird you for keeping thing. it going. Yeah. No. Well, I mean like it, I, it's, it's awesome. This is what I always wanted. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I remember distinctly, uh, the question that broke me at 300 when it was beforehand, I was for, uh, capitalist pigs, my IGN blog. <laughs> and he asked me, is there a beyond without Greg Miller? And I broke down in tears and I said, I hope so. Yeah. Like that. I'm not, I was never, you know what I mean? Like I, when, <laughs> when Jeremy Dunham walked around, he's like, Every channel team is going to have a podcast. We all looked at him and said, that is dumb. We have Game Scoop. Why, why? And it was like, whatever. So we didn't realize wh what we were doing in that first show. But like by the end of it and leaving it, the last thing I wanted to do was leave and have it be like, all right, cool. Duh, tear it all down. Rebrand it. Do this. Like, you know, I, and I know how hard it was for Max stepping in where it was like, oh, you know, it's not the same without Colin and Greg. Oh, da, 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 da. And, we, and Colin and I would both be like, just no, don't, this isn't how you do this. Let them do their thing. Blah, blah, blah. Like. I never wanted, I, I, I love IGN. I loved IGN before I came to IGN. I loved IGN when I worked here and I, I still live and die IGN outside of it, right? There's been a, uh, some news this year that like, you know, really brought all that back up of yeah. like, oh wow, no, at my core, I'm still very much an IGN person and yeah. I, you don't cross the site. You know what I mean? Of like yeah. that. And so, no, I, it's family and it's a thing. And you know, I, I, it took me a while, I think, to wrap my head around that. And I, I'd like to think I've been better about it. And as I've seen, you know, IG and people get hired as I've left people I've never worked with or spoken with. I still try to reach out and congratulate when I see yeah. it or drop uh, yeah. them a DM and be like, you're part of a family now. You know what I mean? And that, that means something of where it all goes. Yeah. It's, yeah. I've seen you do that. You did it for me when I was hired and I've seen you do that for other people since. And it's always so heartwarming to see and makes me so appreciative of, yeah, I made the right choice coming here.
Sure. It, I mean, this place is great. This, this site is great. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's, it's, we're all lucky to get to do what we do and especially to come here and be able to do whatever, you know what I mean? And yeah. try new things and do different stuff. So, I mean, like I, it's for me, it's always the funny thing now of like looking at Brian right from the outside Yeah. of like, man, I remember when Brian Miggles and Brian Altano mm-hmm. got hired at GameSpy by Will Tuttle. And it was like, you bring it on these comedy guys to do what exactly? <laughs> like, what are you doing? All right. You know what I mean? And yeah. then to do up at noon with Brian to see him go on. And I was doing this travel show in Austin and all this. I was like, dude, this is awesome. Like, yeah. Because that was always my thing about IGN is that is I, you know, people talk about crunch. Damon used to always get mad at me because we'd go out and we'd watch a movie and then we'd go to a bar or something and it'd be like one in the morning and I'd be like, all right, I'm going to go back to the office and capture wrestling videos. And he's like, you're <laughs> insane. Stop. And I was like, but I loved it. And this is this is where I, I, I the crunch thing gets weird, right? It's like, I love doing it and I had nothing else I wanted to do. I wanted to go play SmackDown or whatever it was. And so I would go do that and no matter what I put into IGN, I felt like I got out of it. And that's the thing I still think rings true here is if you want to go above and beyond. And you want to do all this different stuff and you, you can make your own future here. Yeah. It's incredible to see that having been put into practice both here and outside with Kind of Funny. And yeah. thank you so much again for being here. Before we wrap up, though, uh, one final question from our producer, Barrett. Okay. Courtney, he would actually like you to read this question for you yourself. So I'm going to hand you that one. Last one here. Uh, apologies in advance, Barrett. Yeah, it's, sure. it's the all caps. In angry Greg voice. Greg the Coward Miller. I am sick and tired of hearing and seeing others enjoy one of my favorite games of all time, but you, dot, 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 a huge Persona fan, have not beaten Persona 5. I know you get it, he put quotes around it, but for the love of God, this game is so pure and about beautiful friendship, it made me feel not empty inside for several hours. Beat Persona 5. Also, rematch me in everybody's golf, you coward. Oh, well, first off, I beat him in everybody's golf, so that's done. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, I don't. you don't get a rematch, no, right? You're back to the bottom of the pole, like a case ladder system from back in the day. If you're old, work your way back up. Barrett's a bad gamer, so it's fine. And Persona yeah. 5 is my shame. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man. As somebody who, like, <laughs> I beat the drum on Persona. I get what? Why does he have a cam? I know. Why does Barrett need a camera back there? Camera. Nobody needs this. No, Barrett, stop it. As somebody who, like, like I reviewed... Uh, I'll never forget Jeff Haynes giving me Persona 3. Yeah. I reviewed Persona 3 Fez for IGN. <laughs> uh, re- or, yeah, reviewed Persona 4 Golden for... I mean, like, I was all over and I love Persona. But, yeah, for Persona 5, as fast and as, bu- as my life is and as busy as it is, yeah, when it was like... what is, I, I, I don't even remember anymore. I, 25 or 30 hours or whatever it was where I was like, I am in love with this game. I love everything about this game. I got to switch to something else. Because <laughs> you know how it is. Yeah. Like, we're... The pace Timely, it. and we're yeah. tastemakers, and it's it is like we don't play everything, but you do play this thing, and uh, you know for what we're playing on shows and stuff. Like I'm already, I've already right now tipped the scales where kids are like, enough Assassin's Creed, we get it, yeah. it's great, you love it, we don't need to hear <laughs> about it every show. So that's where it was getting with Persona. Yeah, I do love it. I do think it's probably the best Persona. But I have gone back to do the next 70 hours I need to to get the other side. Yeah, I, I was going to say, did you get to like the first palace? Yeah, I, I think I yeah. beat two palaces. Yeah. Uh, do you think you will ever go back? No. 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 Yeah. I mean, it's just, I, I feel like I'm a shark. I got to swim forward like I Shark Finnegan. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You got to keep going or you die. Yeah. And so there's just so many. I'm sorry, you, Barrett. You got to love hiking and you got to be a shark. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, Greg. Yeah. Thank you so much for no, being No, I mean, genuine. Jonathan, in, on all honesty, congratulations. Thank like, you. that's the biggest thing for me. And again, why I invited myself on your show is the fact <laughs> that you're a part of a long lineage now. And you already were at IGN and you already were because you were part of the show. But I mean, now you're the host of Podcast Beyond. And like, They'll never take that away from you, and that means an awful lot to a whole bunch of people. And I think the most important thing you can know is that you're going to, I mean, it sounds corny, but you're going to change people's lives. Like, people are going to look to you in a way they didn't look to you before, and they're going to look to you to get them through the bad times and be there in the good times and be part of their regimen and their routine and all these different things in a way that you, you'll never really wrap your head around, but you'll get as the stories come in. And so, like, that's, you know, a profound thing, and I, you know, I'm very proud of you. Barrett, don't put the camera on me because I'm starting to tear up. Uh, all I could say in response is, well, thank you for changing my life from the show. No problem. Thanks for changing mine. Anytime. Uh, Greg, obviously, uh, 
There's a lot going on at Kind of Funny these days. Sure. Where would you like to point people who may not already go there all the time? Just go to kindoffunny.com. Yeah. There's too many shows and <laughs> YouTube channels and Patreons to link. It's all there. We do ga- daily game coverage. Yes. And of course, you are at Game Over Greggy. Correct. On Twitter. And I am at JM Dornbush. This has been Beyond episode 564. Remember, Beyond is live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific at beyond.ign.com. And then you can find it on YouTube and podcast services everywhere you'd expect to listen to it on Thursdays at 3 p.m. Pacific. That's been Beyond. There was a real wrench right there. I was like, were we live the whole time? Oh, yeah, we've been live. No, it's not Wednesday because it's just like a blur. (laughs) Yeah. I have no idea where I am. It feels weird. But, Greg, thank you so much for being on. And, of course, Beyond. Beyond!